Uh, you cannot pour from an empty cup. And love requires energy. And so I think in those moments, we have to think of how can I recharge, uh, how can I refuel again? And, and we have to learn these rhythms of life, of pouring ourselves out and then receiving and being filled up again. Welcome to the Loving God, Loving People podcast, where we talk about what it looks like to follow Jesus in our everyday lives and how, in the end, all that matters is God and people. Here's today's episode. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm sitting here with Chad Moore, and we are wrapping up our series on the Trinity, talking about that here at today's podcast. Chad, you look like you've been exercising recently. Do you want to fill us in kind of on your recent journeys? I wondered if you were going to bring that up. Of course I'm going to bring it up. Yeah, this is interesting. Yeah, so I just hiked uh, the South Rim to the North Rim of the Grand Canyon, which I've done rim to rim. And this was number seven. But this is the first time I've gone south to north instead of north to south. All right. So how was your experience? I think it's a little bit harder going south to north. <laughs> could be that I'm older. Could be that I'm heavier. It could be it's just more difficult. It's it's less um, distance, mm -hmm. but the elevation change is greater going that direction. So for those of you who know the canyon, I went down Kaibab and then across and over up the north rim. All right. So what great epiphanies did you have? You're out in nature for hours, hiking, seeing the beauty of creation, one of the natural wonders of the world. God speak anything to you? Or were you just like, I'm tired. I want to get out of this thing. Yeah, mostly I'm just tired and want, <laughs> <laughs> want to get it done. I uh, we, we did, um, this was a little bit different, Robert. I didn't tell you this earlier. Um, so we, there were a couple of guys in the group that we were with that were struggling a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they started off maybe a little too fast. And so the guy that I hike with, we caught him and then uh, helped him get out of the canyon. So in some of the more um, steep kind of grueling moments, because everybody has their pace, I would go ahead and then I would wait on them, you know, to catch up. That mm -hmm. way we all eventually come out together. So I actually spent more time just sitting and looking at the canyon mm -hmm. in those moments when I was waiting on somebody to catch up. And uh, it really is amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, it really is beautiful. I, I had, um, did I have anything spiritual? I had uh, waves of gratitude, mm -hmm. uh, which was a little different. So I feel um, even though my life hasn't been easy and there's always challenges and to be blunt, I'm your pastor, but there's things that I deal with that are hard. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, just assume anybody you ever meet's probably got a secret battle nobody knows about. Yeah. That's that's just the truth of, of humanity. And and all that's true with me, but I, I feel... Um, overall very blessed and, and grateful. So yeah, that was a great hike. Thanks so, for asking. And yeah. I'm super sore today and I tried to come down the stairs this morning. I thought I was going to fall. It's it's embarrassing. So just out of curiosity, how do you help somebody out of a canyon? Because that seems kind of like, okay, you're going to like pick them up and carry them. Is it more just psychological at that point? Well, there's this moment in the movie Finding Nemo <laughs> where I don't remember this fish's name, but the fish... Dory. Dory, I, thank I, you for I, that, I, Robert, I know where you're going. I can parent see this of coming. eighteen kids yeah. in the Watson compound. Um, yeah, she says just keep swimming. So mm -hmm. I didn't say just keep swimming because that you know just obnoxious dudes like you don't say that right. <laughs> yeah. This is in preschool. Yeah. I probably said uh, <laughs> something a little more masculine than that. But yeah, it's just keep moving. There's, there's such a, a mental aspect to mm -hmm. it. Uh, I mean, frankly, so where I hiked, uh, when you start going up there at the North Rim, that's five and a half miles straight up. Um, I don't care who you are. At mm -hmm. some point, that just gets mental, mm -hmm. right? And and you just got to put one foot in front of the other. So it's encouragement and high fives. And, you know, I tell a guy, hey, you just have to go to this next rest stop, right? Instead of <laughs> saying it's five and a half yeah. miles, it's a mile, you know, you can yep. do that. And then we rest for a little bit. So, yeah, it's just encouragement. Yep. No, that's that sounds like I I, I remember studying this guy, Shackleton, who uh, he was one of the pioneers of Antarctica and his crew they ended up all surviving and he did, was his great leader and he did these, you know, hey, can we, can we do one mile, you know, and he would yeah. do these short marches yeah. where the guy who was doing the exact same thing on the other side, he's he's going, hey, we got this far to get to the South Pole and his whole crew died. Uh, but there is something about that. Okay, can I take it one step at a time, which is true of life, right? Yeah. This is this is part of the journey of life of, you know, if you're in a situation where it's grueling and it's exhausting, sometimes we get so fixated on what is the final destination? Where's all of this headed? It's exhausting, but to go, okay, can I do the next right thing? Can yeah. I take it one day at a time? Can I take the next step? Well, it's called the Grand Canyon. For a reason. And it ain't called Grand for nothing, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it, it, the limit usually of that kind of stuff is not your body, it's your mind. 
And, and, and if you can talk yourself through those little bite-sized chunks, it, it, it makes a big difference. All right. So here's the segue. So we're talking about you helping this guy out, and I'm sure you've had people help you along the way as well. Absolutely. Hiking out of the canyon. Uh, we're, we're talking about this idea of the Trinity, and we're kind of wrapping up this idea that not only is God triune, so he's relational in, in who he is, uh, he's invited us into this relationship, not just with him, but in relationship with one another. That, that part of what it means to be a follower of God, a follower of Jesus, is to enter into this dance. And, and not just with God and us. It's not just me and my relationship with God. The way that I, I express this relationship with God is through my relationship with people. And, and I take what he's poured into me as far as love, grace, mercy, all of that. We talk about this Christian life. God works it in. We work it out. Well, what does that practically look like? So not just hiking out of a Grand Canyon, but for somebody who's now entered into the dance. Say somebody's listening right now, and they've, they've made that transition where they've said, okay, Jesus, here's my life. They've handed their life over to Jesus. I want to be a part of this thing uh, that's existed for all eternity. I want to enter into this dance. What, what does that mean, practically speaking, when it comes to relationships with others? within this thing called the church. Yeah. So there is in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, a supernatural connection that uh, we'll go with you and me, Robert, and our mm-hmm. 17 year friendship here. Uh, there's a 17 su- and a half. 17 and a half. Okay. Thank you. There, there's a supernatural connection between us because of the power of the Holy Spirit, because we're both followers of Jesus. Um, when we talked about the Holy Spirit, you know, we talked about being connected to this network. Well, that is connection with God, the Father, God, the Son, but that's also connection with each other. And it kind of takes it to another level. There, there's been moments, um, I'm sure, in our journey, I know it's true for me, when you've crossed my mind, and I've learned to, when that happens, uh, to just stop for a second and pray for you. Uh, and then come to find out later something was going on, mm-hmm. you know, in, in that moment. Even though we're not in the same room, we didn't talk, I have no idea. That, that's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Um, in our, you were talking about it before we officially went on air here with the podcast, you know, we've got the four icons Mm -hmm. in this Trinity series. Uh, and so you have the father, son, and then there's this other icon. Is it a communion cup? Yeah. Yeah. And it's this idea of we have communion with God, but we also have unity and communion with one another Mm -hmm. because of our devotion to God. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, same values, same mission in life, those kinds of things. So even though we have disagreements about varying things, we have the agreement of the ultimate, most important things in life. And so that joins us together. So there's a supernatural connection that we have through the Holy Spirit. And then there's a connection in the realm of just vision vision and mission because we have the same priorities in life. Yeah. I'm, I, you said something kind of just in passing there, and I, I think it's I think it's a good practical step for all of us to go, okay, I could do something with this. If you're listening and you you ever have those moments where somebody just comes to mind, like out of the blue, and you're like, oh, well, I haven't thought about them in a while. Uh, let that be a trigger to pray for that person because you don't know what God's doing. I mean, there's the, you know, obviously we can see each other. There's the physical relational realm. We know all that, but there's a there's a spiritual realm and there's things going on that, that we're not able to see visibly, uh, but but there's things going on, like you said earlier in our conversation, just imagine somebody's hurting. Imagine somebody's got something going on in their life that you don't know, something that they're dealing with, battling with. Uh, so use that, yeah, as a trigger to go, hey, this person randomly popped in my head. That's weird. Don't just move on. Pause, even if it's just for a couple seconds and just pray for that person. I think I think it's a great practical advice just out of what you're saying there. Yeah, there's been um, moments in, in ministry when I've had prayer time in a, in a group of people. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk more about this in the future as we learn more and more about the Holy Spirit. But somebody has a word of knowledge, like over me. A word of knowledge means they have something on their mind. They feel like they need to come pray with me. And so I've had somebody that I don't know uh, in in a big prayer meeting come up to me. uh, Hey, I just feel led to pray for you. Would that be all right? I say, yes. They say, can I put my hand on your shoulder? I'm like, okay. And they say, I just have this on my mind and I feel like I'm supposed to pray for you about this. And that's happened several times with me. And every time it's exactly what I'm wrestling with in the moment. And, and the love that you feel from God in that moment is overwhelming Mm -hmm. because in this journey of faith, there's some doubt. And when you're hurting, 
and God uses somebody else to come alongside, and it's somebody who couldn't possibly know what I'm hurting over, and they speak something like that over me, it's just God going, I'm real, I got you. And he's ministering through another person in a way that otherwise would not be possible. It's it's a beautiful thing. So yeah, the Holy Spirit connects us. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you have those moments, so there's been times when I'm like, have a word of knowledge about somebody else, but I wimp out. Because I'm like, well, that's weird. I'm not going to walk up and go, hey, uh, I, I think God wants me to pray for you about this. You know, I've had moments when a waiter or a waitress, I have that kind of thing. And I've, I've tried to learn over time when that happens not to wimp out. Yeah. Uh, because you never know what God might do through that simple obedience. Now, how, how I preface it with, in case I'm just, you know, being crazy, is I say, hey, I, this kind of sounds weird, but does this mean anything to you? And uh, about 90% of the time, it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Uh, or they won't admit it. Maybe it's 100% of the time they won't admit it. But um, yeah, God ministers in that way. There's a supernatural connection in the family of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. Just because I'm curious, yeah. how do you breach that kind of a conversation? So you're sitting at Applebee's. Chad doesn't eat at Applebee's, but no, I'm, we're going to use this as a hypothetical. So Chad's at Applebee's. Can't nothing against Applebee's. Um, and you, you have this sense of like, okay, I'm supposed to say something to this person. Or how, how do you breach that conversation without being weird? Okay, I'm going to give you a story. Okay. So not this time, but the time before that I hiked the Grand Canyon. Um, my buddy and I, we were, we were going down like at 430 in the morning. The, the sun hadn't come up yet and the trails were icy. And we were like, uh, we'll probably do something else. So we wound up doing a different route, but we hiked like 20 miles. Uh, on the way back to the hotel, because we're hiking back to the, walking back to the hotel in Tucson, um, the Red Feather Lodge in Tucson. So if you ever hiked the Grand Canyon, you might have stayed there. But anyway, so we're walking back. And we see this guy and we have this exchange because he's on the trail too. And he keeps going. And I look at my friend that I'm hiking with and I'm like, dang it. He goes, what? I go, I think I was supposed to ask that guy if I could pray for him. I said, I totally wimped out. Like it was on my mind. This guy's talking, but I feel weird. I'm like, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't know this guy from Adam. And all of a sudden I'm going to throw a prayer on him. So anyway, so I literally with my friend, my friend's name's John. I pray out loud for that guy. And I say, Father, if you want me to pray for him, literally, would you have him come across our path again? Two minutes later, he catches up with us because he was going the other direction. And he says, hey, I just wanted to, I, I might have given you guys wrong directions. I just wanted to whatever. <laughs> and I'm looking at John. John's looking at me and I'm like, okay, here we go. So here's what I say. I say, hey, man, this might sound weird, but a moment ago when you were with us, I felt like I was supposed to ask you if I could pray for you. And I don't want to be weird or creepy or anything, but is there anything in your life maybe that's just difficult right now? Is there anything I could pray for you about? Because I'd like to do that if that's okay. This dude tears up and like starts to break down and he spills the beans on what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. John and I both put our hands on his shoulder, pray for him. And then we walk back to the Red Feather Lodge. (laughs) Um, I I think you just breach it with, hey, I know this sounds strange, uh, but I just feel like I'm supposed to pray for you, Mm -hmm. you know, about maybe this. Does that mean anything for you or something, you know, if it's something specific or it could just be, uh, you just ask them, is there anything I can pray for you about? I really feel led to do that. So that was super cool because Mm -hmm. I wimped out and then I asked God for another chance and he gave it to me. So I I think it's just, um, I I tell you what it is, Robert, just to be a hundred percent honest. I, I feel like God more and more is just telling me, be willing to look stupid on my behalf. Uh-huh. Be so obedient that you're just willing to look stupid. And so in those moments that I've done that, and like I said, I wimp out sometimes, I try to with wit and, uh, you know, hopefully some wisdom as well, kind of breach the awkwardness of it, uh-huh. but just do it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. You, um, I'm going to kind of out you on stuff. This is this is the joy of the podcast. Chad has no idea what I'm going to ask him or where, where the conversation is going to go. Uh, but there's times that, that you and I have had conversations and you've said, you know what, man, I just, just want to be a cowboy. Like there's times you have that where you're just exhausted. You just want to isolate. You just want to, you know, yeah. live out on a pasture or whatever and like look out and just see the mountains or whatever. Well, since, but, since we're just friends here on the yeah, podcast, yeah. has there been moments in your life recently when you felt that way? Often. Yeah. There's so many times. And, and I think that, that there is a draw of like, man, if I could just get to a place where I could just isolate, where yeah. I could just be all, you know, off somewhere picturesque and by myself or with just my family or whatever and nobody else. Yet 
there, there's part of us that, that would start to decay. There's part of us that would start to become miserable in that Cowboys situation. Cowboys ain't easy to love and they're harder to Hey, hold. listeners, I'm sorry. I didn't know this where this was headed. I didn't know Chad was going to start singing, but here he is. <laughs> I didn't and, know you are going to talk about being a cowboy. I know, I know. But there is something about the soul that needs to, to have that interaction with people. We were created for it. Absolutely. We weren't created to isolate. Um, yet, why is it that, that you feel like, because you've experienced some of that, I've experienced that, I think a lot of people have experienced that, we're drawn to go, I just want to isolate, I just want to be by myself, yeah. and, then, and then we'll talk about the, the benefits of, of not isolating here. That's a great question, um, and I think I can give a pretty accurate, direct answer. Mm-hmm. It's because love requires energy. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is when your energy is depleted, and that could be physically, um, and when I got done with the Grand Canyon... I don't love anybody. I mean, I'm, I need a 32-ounce lemon-lime Gatorade mm-hmm. and, and a warm blanket. It's what I need when I get out of the canyon because yep. I usually get the chills. Uh, I don't have it in me to love anybody. So that's physical depletion. But sometimes we're emotionally depleted. Mm-hmm. And so when I um, you know, have the cowboy dreams of I'm just going to go get on a horse and be in the middle of a field somewhere, that means I'm emotionally depleted. Mm-hmm. Uh, you cannot pour from an empty cup. And love requires energy. And so I think in those moments, we have to think of how can I recharge, uh, how can I refuel again? And, and we have to learn these rhythms of life of pouring ourselves out and then receiving and being filled up again. And that's part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit and part of being in the family of God as well. I receive so that I can give, so that I receive, so that I can give, so I receive that so I can give. And the more, I'm going to say what we say, the more we surrender to that flow, mm-hmm. uh, the more we grow. But there are moments when you're just depleted. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I think Jesus felt that. Not that he wanted to be a cowboy, right? Yep. Um, but he would get alone, mm-hmm. you know, on, on the mountainside and just spend time with his father. And, and, and that's okay. But I think that temptation for isolation uh, is caused by depletion. Mm-hmm. And you're just emotionally exhausted. It requires the energy to love somebody. Yeah. And I, I think there's a there's a counter side to this, too, because there's also so just recently I, I reached out to our campus pastors. Hey, tell me some of the stories of people who are serving on your campus. And like, let me let me just hear some of their stories. And so they're, they're sending me uh, these stories. And it's phenomenal because I'm reading what some of these people have written or said to their uh, some of our staff across the campuses. And they're talking about how filling it is for them to serve other people. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, there's one side where we get energy depletion. We need to, OK, I need to recharge. And there's another side where if you've never entered into a place where you're serving people, there there is something when it's the right fit for how God's wired you and gifted you. There, there is something fueling about serving others that's counterintuitive, where it it can, in a way, when you serve others, fill up your own tank and energize you. And I've seen it again and again where people are like, man, I'm so grateful I get to serve at Sun Valley. Wait, what? What do you think about the church? We're the only organization in the world where we're like, hey, give us money and come work for free. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that doesn't make any sense yeah. at all, right? Yep. And and yet, um, I mean, I, I work here, but there's a bunch of things I do people don't know about that are just in the realm of me serving. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a group that comes to our house every Tuesday night. That's not in my job description. Yep. I do that because I love those people. And, and Katrina and I give. There, there, there's, there's something just about that. Yeah. That is part of the flow. It's part of the dance. And the dance of the Trinity. Yep. Yeah, it's part of being in the family of God. And when you and I offer this self-giving love, uh, there's a flow to that. And again, we receive and we give and we receive and, 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 and we give. So when Jesus is leading his disciples, and we have in the Gospels, we have not everything that he taught, but we have some of the key points of what he taught when he was with his disciples. And so God's gifted us with the Bible so we can know that. What I find interesting, Jesus didn't just show up and say, hey, I took care of everything, put your faith in me and we're done, it's good. He still taught. He taught a way to live. He taught a way to operate. He modeled, Here, here's how this dance looks and here's how it it works. And so um, I, I could give all kinds of teachings that Jesus did. And the reason he gave those teachings is there is, once we enter into this faith in Jesus, there is a new way to live. Yeah. There is a new way of operating. Now we belong first and then we believe and then we behave. So we've, I think, gotten that in the right order where traditionally in the church it was, well, you had to behave a certain way to, to be a part of this. And then, you know, maybe you'll kind of believe what we believe and then and then you'll belong. And um, that that's not how the church is meant to be. That's not how this dance, it's, it's no, everybody belongs here. Everybody's invited into the family of God. Um, but then once you believe, okay, now he starts to transform 
our behavior. So there's this teaching, and Jesus models it brilliantly right before he goes to the cross. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to him. So what does he do? He, he gets up from the table. He goes, he wraps a towel around his waist. He gets a bucket of water, and he starts washing the disciples' feet. And, and he dries the feet, and they're all going, what is Jesus doing? Like, yeah, rabbi, teacher, leader, what, what's going on here? And Jesus says, hey, I've set an example for you that, okay, you guys aren't greater than your master, right? This is, this is an example. I've modeled it for you. I've set an example for you. Now I want you to go do the same. Uh, that part of the Christian life, to follow Jesus means we will give and we will serve. Yeah, so you, we're talking about the dance. If, if you haven't been on this journey with us, talking about the journey, talking about the Trinity, Basically, the dance means you step out of self-centeredness. Mm-hmm. Self-centeredness means you want everything to revolve around you. The problem with that is it leads to the destruction of the soul because you weren't created to be self-centered. You were created to be in this dance of giving and serving, like we're just talking about, of, of kind of self-giving love. And when that happens, you're actually filled up. Um, I, there's something in that passage that I want to bring up. Mm-hmm. So Robert was talking about... Um, washing the disciples' feet. At the beginning of that passage, before that run happens, the Bible says, knowing who he was. Knowing who he was, Jesus got up and he, you know, prepared himself and then he washed the disciples' feet. The beauty of right relationship with God the Father through your faith in the Son, sealed by the Holy Spirit, is the more that you learn of that, the more you will know who you really are. And in knowing who you really are, suddenly you don't have to use people anymore to make yourself feel better or to accomplish something or whatever. You can actually start loving people. And I just think there's this beautiful security that comes in the grace that we receive through Jesus in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Father ordained it all, that gives us the strength and security to wash people's feet. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mystery and yet it's not, it's, it's this beautiful thing to be part of the family of God of, I've got nothing to prove. Uh, I'm fully loved. I'm fully accepted, uh, because God is my father. Jesus is my brother and I'm sealed by the Holy spirit. So I've got nothing to prove and only one to please. And that frees me, uh, to give and to serve, to have awkward conversations on a trail at the Grand Canyon. Um, to just surrender to life and whatever God has for us on any given day. Um, the Trinity is a mystery and yet it's not. Mm-hmm. It's, it's this beautiful fellowship that we have with God and each other. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I got nothing to add to that. That's beautiful. And if you're, go ahead, you're going to say something. Well, I'm just going to say, how cool is it that we get to talk about this? Yeah. I mean, it's the most beautiful, wonderful thing in life. Um, I can talk about it all day. And, and how amazing is it to, to not just talk about it, but to experience it, whether you've been on the, the giving, the receiving end, that, that's the thing about the church, that's the thing about this family that we're all adopted into, is uh, you get to experience it both ways. I mean, there's so many different people throughout the years of my life that have served me in different ways without even knowing it, and people that have you know prayed for me when I've come to mind, and, uh, and, and I know your story is the same thing, and, and then we also have opportunity to then serve others when they're in need, and, and this dance goes on and on throughout all of history until one day Jesus calls us all home. We get to celebrate it for all eternity with him, uh, but it's a beautiful thing. If you haven't entered into the dance by giving and serving, join, because uh, it really is. It, until it's, it's fun to talk about, but until you experience it, it's hard to even explain it completely, um, but it's what God's called us to. So join us, join the dance. It's a beautiful thing. And the world will know us mm-hmm. by our love for one another. I mean, that's straight out of the mouth of Jesus. Yeah. And that's a giving and serving thing. Yep. So let's be known for that. Love God, love people. Thanks for watching this week's episode of the Loving God, Loving People podcast. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, if you found value in this conversation, we'd love it if you would like this video, leave us a comment, and even share it with a friend. Doing that will help more people meet, know, and follow Jesus. And lastly, you are always welcome to join us each week for one of our services right here live on YouTube. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.